Welcome to Mycroft's 4th of September developer software meeting. Here we go. All right. So, um, so this is the end of our sprint for this two weeks, right? If I'm correct. All right. All right. So, uh, so let's take a. Uh, we'll go through the the existing sprint and just do a quick check in on how we're doing. Um, and uh, after the meeting, if there's anything that didn't make it in by this sprint, uh, we'll you know we'll uh, push that into the next sprint. Um, if in the course of going through these items, uh, you think that we shouldn't push an item into the next sprint, then we'll note that. Um, I want to try to minimize how much time we spend actually uh, messing around with the uh, Jira interface uh, during the meeting. Um, and uh, so uh, em Emily is taking notes. We can uh, actually get around to doing anything that is more than trivial uh, after the meeting. So uh, with that being said, um, if we get through all of the sprint stuff in a timely fashion, then we can talk about uh, any other issues that are outstanding there. So without further ado, uh, let's start with Gez. Oh, we can't hear you guys, or I can't anyway. That is accurate. Um, <laughs> 20 out of 8 still released. Uh, the, one, the two things that I uh, forgot to add on before were generating new images for PyCross and, and the Mark 1. Um, so I've added those uh, onto there um, and started that, but I'll need to get rolled over to the next sprint. Um, uh the those couple of bugs there they're still outstanding because we're waiting on the um uh the process status and, and other stuff um in core that we didn't want to merge into the 2008 so that's coming in 20.8.1 um but they i think the the pr on that just needs a review um uh, so they're kind of, they're blocked essentially. Um, and then the yes, no thing, uh, I, I've put a lot of detail in the, in the comments, so I won't bother going over that, but if you're interested, check out that and we might talk about it after. Um, and then yeah, posting the images, uh, I just need to go around to doing that. Um, but if there's any reason I shouldn't post either of them, then let me know. Uh, no, uh, so you're so 112 and 115. Uh, you're talking about posting the Mark II images for Qt and or Kivi for the community to test. Uh, can you just uh, briefly go over what's what that's about, real quick again? Uh, just that we, you know, there are people that have made um, their own Mark II prototypes, um, and to date, like compiling everything to actually run those uh, to run Microsoft on those with a GUI is like quite complicated um, and obviously we've done the work to do that because we run them on our own devices um, and we, we've just never actually released the software for people to, to run things on their own prototypes so it's you know for the, for the people that have put all the work into putting together a hardware prototype it's giving them a, an easy to use image gotcha. um, to help evaluate. Right. That. So, what's the yeah. feedback path for that? Like, if they have comments on, you know, functionality or bugs or anything like that, where do they communicate that sort of thing? Uh, well, I'd be putting it. I'd be putting both into into a single um, thread on the forums. Um, there's also the the GUI channel on on Minecraft chat. Um, which is where I'd anticipate. Well, there's also the Mark II channel. Um, so probably it'd be coming through the Mark II channel unless it was very specifically GUI related. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so we're not posting yeah. these up to one of our repos or anything like that. These are. No, no, no. Yeah. That would just be in the forums and chat. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, all right, thanks, guys. Um, Let's see who's next. Derek. 
Okay, so I got, well, you know, it looks like about half of this done, but it's not as bad as it looks. Um, but I got, okay, so I did an update, or I posted an update in um, Mattermost in the team channel for where I'm at with the, with the full assembly of the first rev of the, the new uh, dev kit design with the SJ201 book. So that's going to be an FDM printed prototype. Um, so that'll be what we focus on after we uh, get done with these laser cut ones. So I've actually got the laser cut parts all done for Chris, Ken, and myself, but I'm still printing audio chambers. Um, so that should actually going to try and print something through the weekend. So hopefully I'm pretty much done with that uh, early next week. So that'll clear out a lot of the, the stuff still in progress. Um, can you but shoot yeah, me an really email and, and point me point me at the STLs and the SVGs for that? Oh yes, yeah. Um, actually, I need to just get them up on on GitHub. I've made the changes. Kevin had some uh, suggestions to better access the um, the ribbon cable for the display, so I made those changes. So we just get them posted up on on GitHub as well. Um, but yeah, my goal is to really get as uh, any of the, although I have the design done for the 3D printed, full 3D printed version, uh, or at least the first draft, I really want to get the quick laser cut ones out to everybody first and make sure we get that that done. Um, maybe even a couple extras uh, before I, I spend a, too much time because the, the process of, of a fully 3D printed one is much slower. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been me, uh, did not get, uh, to work too much on the, um, uh, well, this, I've been, I don't know, there's something we might want to talk about afterwards is just like this, the re-speaker has been kind of giving us a lot of trouble. It seems like and maybe we, uh, it's becoming a bit of a distraction in terms of trying to perfect it. So that might be something we discuss, discuss later. Um, yeah, okay, so that's me. <clears throat> All right, thanks, Derek. Uh, Ken. So I spent uh, the week trying to nail down this bug. I, I know less now than when I started, but I, as far as what the bug specifically is, but I do understand our stack better. I understand from a software and hardware spec perspective, I understand some of the limitations of what we're using with Pulse Audio and things like that. I also think we have some issues with our basic image where we're bringing in codecs and modules that we don't use and that we don't even have the hardware for. And they're in that chain, so that could be part of it as well. Uh, but I've been working on that and I will continue to do so briefly. Um, I looked at the yes, no uh, from a couple of perspectives. Uh, so I have a couple of questions for Gez. So Gez, um, two questions. Uh, are we getting back from the speech to text when it's not recognized as yes? Are we getting back yeah, Y E A H, and the skill is not keying off of that? It's ex explicitly looking for yes, or is it uh, capable? No, of we look for yeah, yeah. We look for a range of of things that mean yes and no. Um, okay. So that that's fine if if people say nope and it translate that correctly, then, you know, it, it will return no. It's more, if you, if you say yes, and the STT returns guess, or yet, or something like that, which doesn't in the English language mean yes, um, and the STT has just got it wrong, so. Well, I just went to the, uh, to the back end uh, directly through a browser. Uh, and gave it a bunch of yeses, and based upon where I was standing, I will get back a yes or a yeah. And so, as long as we can pick up yeah, then that's not the well, issue. Hold on, that's 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 with that's with your accent as an American male, you know, uh, middle class American male who lives in Florida. Yeah, so yeah, you know, there 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 there's a a, a much broader audience out there, and so. You know, at this point, you know, I think we should be thinking about, like, if it is, you know, uh, you know, whatever, guess was what was one of the ones that Gez just brought up. Um, 
is there a way for us to capture that as a company and find out that it happened, that in in six percent of instances when we use the yes no skill the sdt algorithm came back with the word guess right which as humans we look at and immediately intuit that they meant yes and for us to build a correction for that right because that's the type of thing that we should be paying attention to if we want people using the software to improve the quality of the software that's exactly what the uh, the precise training loop does right and so i think it's just a matter of um you know expanding our our data collection to, you know, to those missed intents as well, right? Um, which, you know, certainly is on the roadmap, uh, but uh, we, we can be thinking about it actively. Um, well, yeah, and I, I'm putting the ticket that that's something that I think we should think about while we're doing this precise tagger stuff, because it's, it's not specifically a wake word. Um, and so it might need a little bit of, uh, you know, flexibility around how we design a schema and stuff, but it, I think it's close enough to actually to live in the in the hot word spotter tagger kind of thing. I take a more a much more simplistic approach to that. I, and I agree with everything that was said. It's just more work there. The the path of least resistance is to go into the yes no and say, okay, J E S S is yes. G U E S S is yes. You know? Yeah. Anything that doesn't have an ooh in it is yes, right? S is yes. I mean, that's the simplest well, way to solve it. But, but let me, hold on, let me. The first option I had in the, in the ticket, so that's why okay, I kind of, so, yeah. So I would, if, I, would classif I would classify what, what Ken just said as a kludge, right? Which is fine yeah. if we want to get this out the door for English as quick as possible. But we has an ooh in it and also means yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I agree. I haven't really expanded to think about other languages yet. Just saying that that's how my simplistic mind works. Now, the other issue is that it could be the case, and I've seen this on the wake word, where sometimes, depending upon timing, it actually snips it a little short. And while that's not too tough for, hey, Mycroft, because it has a nice a hard ka or ta at the end of it, Yes, really does require the trailing S wedge. And if you clip it, that could be causing some issues there. So maybe it's just a turnaround time issue. I don't know. I haven't really looked at it. I just know that I went up to Google speech to text and gave it a bunch of things to see what it would come back with. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's that's kind of a couple of things I was looking at. I'll continue to, well, I'm gonna try to take the weekend off. Uh, um, also, also uh, when you're evaluating Google speech to text, uh, keep in mind, that's not the way that we're doing the transcriptions. Okay. So the, the, the way that the transcriptions, the last I checked and you can go check the code, but the transcriptions were being done through the Google translate API with the source language set as English and the destination language set as English, not through Google's speech to text interface. Isn't that interesting? Uh, just out of curiosity, why did we do that? Uh, you might want to mark the time here, Emily, uh, because it's free and they never noticed. It's free and they haven't noticed that we're doing it for free. Otherwise, we'd be paying them. Okay. And speech to text pure is not free, I take it. Because, yeah. I no, they that. have a variety of different payment plans, none of which involve us not paying them. Yeah, yeah. They wanted my credit card information. That, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, that, thank you, Josh. That, that clears that up for sure. Uh, but yeah, Tuesday when we come back to work, uh, I'm pretty sure I will uh, continue to be looking at isolating what this problem is, but from a much more rudimentary perspective, which is I'm going to plug a custom board from Kevin into my Ubuntu laptop, and I'm going to take this one off of the uh, Mark II and plug it directly in and see if the problem persists on either device. Uh, outside of the Pi environment, and um, and then take it from there. But, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. Oops. So yeah, I, you know, I think we spent a lot of time on this particular issue, and you know, based on the discussion, the lengthy discussion you and I had earlier today, um, I'd like to limit how much more time we spend on it, uh, given the number of things that it could be that are going to completely change with the new SJ two hundred one design. So there's a high likelihood that it's dependent on the re speaker board. And the drivers and whatnot, and so um, you know, 
uh, if you know, spend another day on it. But um, you know, yeah, that might be Tuesday, and then yeah. I await my new marching order. Yep. Right. Yeah, we'll, and we'll discuss that on Tuesday as well. Perfect. So. And that's my update. Cool. Thanks. Um, who else left? Oh, Chris. Here. Okay, so uh, the new upload endpoint in Cellini for uploading wake words is done. It's just there's a PR waiting for review. Um, this tagging UI revived. That was that, that meeting was actually done. I'll move that over. Um, storage of wake word samples is code complete. I'm just doing some testing, but I ran into a a bit of a snag because the uh, the Cellini or the precise user. Um, on the uh, host that has all the wake words on it is uh, set up to only allow SCP commands. Um, I can't SSH into it or anything like that. So it, uh, it uses- uh, You're Talking about the upload server that currently exists? Yeah. Yeah, log into it as Ubuntu or as Matt? I have my own user ID on it, but I still need to be able to copy them over to the precise user. Um, so I think I'm going to, there's an RSSH um, restriction on the precise user that I'm considering removing because I also need to be able to um, to create directories. Um, you know, on that machine? Mm -hmm. On the upload server? Yeah. Aren't you, aren't you creating and work? The upload server is getting dangerously low on storage space. Uh, it has access to the NAS. I actually had to modify my stuff to not even work off of the local drive just to do everything on the NAS. Why do you need access to anything but the NAS? I would access, yeah, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm accessing the NAS. But the precise user owns right the file. Or Matt or yourself. What? You should be able to write to it as Ubuntu, Matt, or you. Precise can't write to it because it was set up to be like a service or something, but, and you could you could certainly do that, but you don't have to use the user precise. That's what I'm questioning. Why is that a holdup? Okay, I, I figured I did. I like to use application users for anything I possibly can. I don't like using my own user ID for anything. Um, it's just a, oh, something I've always done and something I, like, I would like to continue to do. But I don't even understand why you're on that machine. I have to copy the files over there, don't I? Copy what files? The wake world files? They go to the NAS. Yeah, and, oh. and the, this, this server has a mount point on that NAS. But don't, doesn't your Cellini server also have that same mount point? No. How did you get the files over there in the first place? I haven't yet. You sure did. You moved them out of the Hey Mycroft directory into your schema. That's a... I don't understand what you're saying. It's a database thing. No, okay. I'm not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Said, let's let's take this offline. Schema, I was wrong. What I I misspoke. You moved them from Mount Nas Hey Micra to Mount Nas Wake Words or something. You called it right. Well, that was all manual, and I did that all on the precise host. Selenium hasn't done anything yet. So you so you did that when you were on the upload server. Logged yes. in as you. Yes. I see. I thought you would expose that mount to the Cellini server, which you're ultimately going to have to do anyway, right? Yeah, we need to we need to have a sit down and talk yeah. about the architecture because Cellini's in New York on a separate network, and the mount stuff's in Lawrence on the Wicked network, and there's 10 gigs of capacity between the two, so capacity is not an issue. But I think we want to think through the security construct carefully. And you know, whitelist. If we are, I mean, I'm not opposed to doing an NFS mount over the internet. We need to talk a little bit about crypto, but uh, it, I'm sure it can be done securely. Uh, however, I think we need to have a sit down and talk about that architecture a little more carefully. I think yeah, you misspoke. When you said 10 gig, you meant 10 terabytes. No, yeah. there's a 10 gig, 10 gigabit per second um, oh, link. Oh, you're talking about through, the yeah, because... yeah, through hurricane, through hurricane to. Uh, to the DigitalOcean data center in in New York. 
Well, I, I think you're right, because right now, like you pointed out, we basically have three different data centers involved in trying to communicate. And just from a transmission perspective, that's probably less than ideal. Uh, yeah, we, so, yeah. Hold, hold on. You, you said three. Um, you as far said as I know, there's only. Cellini's running in New York. You've got Lawrence. New York on, on DigitalOcean, yeah. And then yeah. Lawrence, what's the third? Wherever the upload server is running. I don't believe that's running in Lawrence. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it's in, it's in Lawrence, too. Sorry, I thought you were about to tell me that we had an S3 bucket at Amazon. No, which, no, I wasn't going to do that. I've, I've, <laughs> I've had that conversation with this team before, so you scared me a little bit. No, 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 but it's on a 10 dot, uh, so it's on a sub. All right, let's let's let's, right, well, let's, anyway, let's just yeah, put yeah. a pin in this, okay? We, I, I totally agree with Josh. We need to have a separate meeting about this and discuss the architecture. Uh, I'd like to see some, you know, some diagrams that very clearly delineate where things are and how things are stored and how things are moving around because you know we've talked about this at length and we've discussed you know the implementation but still there's some confusion about things so uh so let's let's go yeah, ahead and have a meeting about that yeah somebody let, let's draw the diagrams at a meeting because i've got about half the knowledge and and chris has the other half all right yeah let's set all up right. something for tuesday then okay i'll do that um as of right now, I have a script that does SCPs. So I'll just stop it right there. And and uh, once we decide, then I'll change it or get rid of it, whatever I have to do. And that's what I've been doing for gotcha. the last couple of days for this. Is That was my assumption was that we were SCPing the files over. So that's why I wrote the script. <laughs> that, is, that is actually true. That's how I get the uh, training data from the upload server to the precise Lambda 2 server is through SCP as well. So that's that's okay. fine. All right. Well, yeah, and if I and if I could do it, I would use SSH as a database. So I, I'm very comfortable using SSH for everything, but we can talk about other protocols. I'm fine with that. Okay. So that I thought that was done. It apparently is not. Hopefully we'll finish it next week. Um, one thing I did want to talk about, and maybe this is a separate meeting too. The next thing I was gonna do was the uh, SEL83, which was um, implementing deletion. So what happens when a user deletes their account? We've talked about, yes, we're going to delete, delete the files, so the physical files, so that um, you know, we, we uphold our privacy policy, but we would leave um, you know, records of the file's existence in the database. And you know, how all that's going to, we really want that to work um, before I got too far with that. Um, make sure I was on the right page before I started doing any coding. So we okay. that's something we yeah. talked about as well. Yeah, if you, if you have any concerns about that, we should definitely talk about it before you get started there. Just to be clear with anybody who's listening, we do delete the data, but it's all being, being done manually on a, on a regular basis uh, rather than automated. <laughs> so just to be clear about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the, um, Chris, the, the pruning of the database is super, super important, having been the victim of databases that didn't prune in the past, we, we should sit down and work it out through. Okay. Uh, yeah, so then I, I didn't get to Mattermost or the WordPress. I didn't get into any of that stuff. Um, I still have a little bit of work to do in the wake word collection and next print before I'm going to tagging. I guess is where I am. Chris, do you have the schema done? Yeah, all the DDL's done and it's all in the database. At least, well, this is in my personal database. <laughs> Where, I was going to say, where is that database running? That's the only thing I'm blocked on. I can get back on Precise once I can select the uh, file names from a database. Well, right now it's running my MacBook. Okay. <laughs> Put it in New York. <laughs> okay. uh, that, would, that, would, that would involve a production push, and I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> my, my PRs haven't even been reviewed. <laughs> when, when do you think the, uh, the test version of your schema will be accessible to a Postgres client? Um, as soon as um, we figure out the storage thing um, and how we're going to move the files around, then I can do a release of Selene and we can put it to test. And my P and the PRs will be reviewed. Uh, so that raises a question for me is, uh, so a few of you have some PRs out there for review. I assume that they're, you're just swapping uh, PRs for review. So who's going to review those? Is that going to be Gez or is that going to be Ken? Or uh, you just kind of throw it out there and hope somebody looks at it? I tagged Chris and uh, Ken on it. Okay. Um, 
I, I tag both of them on all my PRs just because they're the other the other two developers on the teams. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I didn't don't specifically say this person or this person. I figure one of them will pick it up or right. both of them. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so that's I, did, something that... I did have a look at this one in particular, but I, I feel like Ken, you've got a hell of a lot more uh, knowledge around, you know, you guys have been in discussion around how this system should look. So, I mean, I had a look at it and it looks fine, but like, I don't know if it meets everything that you were talking about. So I think you should really review that one. Yeah, Chris, if you can, uh, I don't know that I'm actually getting automated pull requests in my email. Um, I did. I do see. I did see a pull request, not this one specifically. So, uh, if you could just uh, email me and uh, you know yank my chain and remind me, I'll, I'll definitely sit down and take a look at it with you. Okay, there's a link to the PR in, in this in, in this ticket here. So, what's the ticket number? SEL ninety one. SEL ninety one. Okay. Do you want to assign that to Ken or? Yeah. Why don't you do that? Assign that okay. to Ken. So yeah, so my plan was to, um, sorry, my phone. Um, so my plan was to do a, a release that did the collection stuff and and the and the moving of the collected data to the to the NAS, and then that, the second release would be the tagging stuff. So um, as soon as we can figure out the how we want to get the data to the NAS, then we can do a release, and then we can talk about you know how we. And we use the schema and all that good stuff. So uh, first part next sprint for me will be finishing that up, and then um, we'll move to the tagging. Okay, great. Uh, so we're going to do uh, sprint planning for the next sprint on Tuesday. Our uh, we have Monday off, right? So. Um, so we need to reschedule that Monday meeting to Tuesday. Uh, that's one thing. And then um, uh, I can give you, well, I was actually just going to check my email, see if there's any last second updates here. Um, well, we do want to have that infrastructure meeting. Maybe Tuesday's a bit early, but maybe Wednesday? Well, the earlier the better, because this is, I'm kind of blocked until I, on, on, on this part, until uh, we figure it no, out. No, I, so. I agree 100%. It's just Tuesday's the first day back. We have the sprint planning meeting, and I hate having multiple meetings in a day, and I hate meeting every day, every week. So, yeah, but um, well, yeah, you're right. We need to we need to discuss this because it's kind of gate, it's a gating factor. I mean, you know, there's no reason to have everything disparate like this because just SCPing is going to be inefficient and expensive, right? And so, slow. yeah, why don't you guys have that meeting in the morning? You know, it doesn't have to be a long one, and you don't have to include everybody. Um, uh, well, if you do it in the morning, then Josh, well, no, that's a different issue. Um, Chris and I can meet and come up with a wish list and then yeah. forward it on to Josh for how we think it would, would be perfect. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm happy to get up, but there's some reasons why things are split the way they are. It, it does make sense, but they're all mostly financial, so we can, we can work things out. All right, so Chris, you and I can meet, I guess, uh, Tuesday around noon or whatever and, and discuss. And over the Josh, if you, actually, I'd like, I prefer Josh to be there because he's going to know the most about the, you know. Yeah, it's fine. Just book me something early in the morning. I'm fine. Okay. It's not like at 4 a.m., please. <laughs> Maybe an hour before our normal uh, meeting would be good. Okay. Well, I'll make it two hours before and you'll be set. All right, Michael, you want, did you want to be optionally invited to that as well? or you No, know? I don't need to be there. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm just looking at the calendar. We're going to have to bump a couple things around. Uh, we've got a bunch of the, I've got a bunch of stuff stacked up on Tuesday, so we might have to cancel the marketing meeting. But, um, that's fine. Uh, or the oh, sprint right. can just go until Wednesday. We can do sprint planning on Wednesday and have a small sprint. I don't. <laughs> well, um, we still have to, you know, we still have some things to talk about, so. Um, I mean, Gez and, and Derek have things yeah. we should talk about. So let's just stick with the schedule. Um, so on the on the hardware front, uh, last with my last check-in with Kevin, um, we've got uh, 
He's got two boards in the in the mail. Oh, hey, nope, there it is. Derek, why don't you tell us what's going on then? <laughs> okay, so wait, just a little wait, did while I skip, back. Did I skip Derek on the go around? No, no, no. I just okay. didn't mention this. I was saving this as a bonus round. Uh, I did get two boards. You skip your phone, though. You haven't done your own tickets. What's that? Um, Michael hasn't done his own tickets, that's all. Oh, yeah, right. So we got this two of these uh, today, and um, I have not actually got a chance to fire them up yet. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's exciting. And then uh, I think Michael is just about ready to talk about what um, Kevin had shot over today in terms of progress. But um, yeah, we're going to send some. He's going to send some to you, Ken. Uh, and. Let's see. Let's try too far yeah, away. And I, I think he's going to send the rest the rest to me uh, to distribute. Um, so yeah, I I will try and get this uh, hooked up as soon as I can. And actually, I don't think Kevin's actually tried to boot Mycroft on it yet. So um, another good thing about just sharing the PV or Qt repos is, um, you know, I haven't actually sent the link over to Kevin yet, so he can. He can try it out, um, although that's not you know his main objective. But <clears throat> if, you know we can get him to at least boot it up and see what, what he sees. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm pretty excited yeah. to actually get this thing plugged in. Awesome. Yeah. So I think the, the just to reiterate the plan on the hardware side, uh, Derek's going to build up the uh, you know the hardware the, the Mark IIs with uh, with all of the you know the displays and a case and everything like that and uh, hopefully uh, package them in a way that they won't get destroyed on the way to uh, to Ken and, and Chris uh, well uh, I don't know Chris is a little bit closer I don't know how, uh, how you guys are gonna ship those around but um, uh, but yeah so the idea is uh, Ken's gonna get a couple bare boards because he's gonna develop directly off of them uh, in USB mode um, but I also want everyone to get uh, built up you know mark twos in the in the cases uh, with the amplifiers and all that kind of stuff, so we can test everything. So, um, yeah, so that's what's going on there. Um, and on the hardware side, the other things that are in progress are so we're um, we're doing a, well, actually, a whole bunch of stuff. So we're looking at the next rev of the board, uh, and that'll be done through a PCBA house that does all of the sides, so there's no manual soldering and all that kind of stuff involved. And that'll allow us to increase the production volume on those. Still, we're talking about you know, prototype quantities for development purposes. Um, and then uh, there's some you know, uh, ancillary boards. There's like the little USB connector board that we're going to have made and, uh, so that we don't have to use a cable to connect one board to the other board. And, um, and we're also talking about uh, a, a, a sub-module for the display because the, the display that you'll get is going to be a subpar display right now um, because it's it's the easiest one that we can get a hold of but um, we have a plan for getting a uh, an IPS display it's a much higher quality uh, that actually costs a lot less money uh, that requires us to build our own uh, daughter board uh, for the display which basically includes the 24 volt amplifier for the backlight and stuff like that um, and we're also looking into the camera module and uh, you know how we can uh, how we can affordably address that as well. So there's apparently some uh, some cryptography that uh, uh, built into the uh, Raspberry Pi that limits the camera modules that you can attach to it. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but um, you know, but we're looking into it. Uh, yeah, I, I, as uh, Gez pointed out, I didn't go through my tickets. Do I have any tickets in the sprint? I hope not. Just yeah, I, I mainly mostly said it because I thought that you probably wouldn't have been working on them. Um, well, maybe you did. And then there's also a few uh, because because I know you're working on a lot of other things, not because you're being tardy. <laughs> um, and then there's there's still a couple that don't have people attached to them, and I'm I'm sure that I would never touch them if if my name's not attached to it because I just go in and click on my issues only right. every time I look at it. So. 
Well, okay, so... Like we could address that. Yeah, in terms of the process, I think we discussed this last time. I've been creating tickets and assigning them to either this sprint or the next sprint. And so there may be a bunch of issues that are in this sprint not assigned to somebody because I've just been dumping tickets in there because I want somebody to, to look at them. But if we haven't had a chance to look at them yet, then they'll, you know, they'll be considered for the next sprint. Um, if there's anything in the sprint, can, uh, Chris, can you bring up that, uh, the sprint? Is, is there anything on my name with my name on it in particular? That... There is the yellow screen of death that I assigned to you. Oh, well, right. I mean, I don't know why that's assigned to me. I don't know anything about yellow screens of death, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, we should definitely, um, uh, yeah, I know you've been doing some work on that. Uh, I don't actually know if it's a bug or, or what it is, but, um, but yeah, let's, let's put that into the next sprint for assigning to somebody. I suspect yeah, it's it'll a be bug in the frame. It's, in the, it's a bug in how the frame buffer is handled. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's it. Um, any, any last things people want to bring up? Uh, or any any issues not necessarily assigned to uh, the sprint that we need to discuss? No? All right then. Well, uh, so for all of us here, it's going to be a long weekend in the States, and I guess that means Gez also gets an extra day off. So, uh, so enjoy your extra Monday off, and uh, I'll talk to everybody on Tuesday. All right. Everybody have a great Labor Day. Happy Saturday, guys. Ha, 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 ha.